Hello and welcome to challenge 3. In today's video we are going to be having a look at how to solve the wall maze challenge. Now one of the things that we are going to be exploring to begin with is how we can create a variable inside VexVR and what is a variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate across to VexVR and I'm going to open up the wall maze playground. So I've already saved my program as wall maze and I've already selected the wall maze program here. Now Firstly, in order to set up a variable, we go down to variables on the left hand side and we select on make a variable. Now, what we are going to do as per the challenge, we want to record the total number of times the robot turns left or right. Now, what we have done over here is we've made a variable called number of turns and underneath when started. I'm going to set my variable number of turns to zero. Now, either time the robot, or either of the times that the robot turns out left or right, we want to change this number from zero to one, one to two, two to three. Now, rather than just talking about this theoretically, let's actually have a look at how this would work. So let's set up a forever loop, let's set up an if condition, and let's also explore the bumper sensor whilst we're on it. So we're going to do if, we're going to go to sensing, and on the front of our robot here we have got two bumper sensors, one and two. So we're going to say here, if the bumper sensor has been pressed, we want the robot to turn left. And then we're going to change our variable from zero to one. Now notice here, rather than using set, I'm using change and we're going to change it by one and to make sure that it's actually working correctly we are going to tick the variable here and it's going to appear on the right hand side. Now also you can see here actually we can also display our sensors as well and as we're using left bumper let's display the bumper sensor so we can actually see what the robot is doing rather than guessing. So let's have a look. We've got turn left, zero to one, turn left, zero to two, turn left, zero to three, turn left, zero to four. And also we're seeing every time the bumper sensor has been pressed. Now, also in this challenge here, what we want to do here is we want to get the robot to also print out the number of turns that it's making. Let's get the robot to talk to us. So let's get a print statement and we're going to say print and we're going to say the robot has turned and then we're going to get another print block. We're going to go to our variable. We're going to put inside the variable number of turns. We're going to get another print block. We're going to say number of times. And we need to set our cursor to a new row each time something prints. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to read the text and it's going to go off of the screen. So let's just double check to see if this is working. So hit wall, print statement, hit wall, print statement. But you can see here that this is all together. We actually need a little bit of spacing here. So let's just put a space after turns. Let's put a space before number. And there's some other really cool things that you can do with these print statements, but we're not going to explore it today. And this looks pretty good. Now, we need to get the robot to navigate to the checkered flag today. Now we have explored how to set up a variable, and what we're using a variable for. We now want to adjust our program so it gets to this checkered flag here. Now, the next thing I'm going to be introducing you to in this video is going to be the if and the else if and the else block. Now, for those of you which are new to programming, this block here is going to allow us to have multiple conditions. So rather than it just being if left bump pressed or if red detected, we can have if the left bumper has been pressed carry out this condition. So let's copy, a pro, uh, let's copy across our code. And the other thing that we want to do is that the robot at the moment, I think, if we 
hide our window here and copy this into the forever loop. I think that the robot's going to get stuck when it gets to this green number two, because it's going to continue going left and left and left and left, and we're going to get all the way to this section of the maze over here, and then it's going to get stuck. So we're going to need to set up another condition. So what I would say is looking at the down eye here, you can see that the robot is detecting green. So this brings us on to the next part of our program. So we're going to say here, if the and down eye detects green, what would we like the robot to do? Well, we need it to get out of that area here, because if we press play, we can see it's just going to keep turning left all the time, and it's going to be stuck in this area. So this needs to be an autonomous program, but I'm going to use a drive block and you may find another way around this. This is just a very quick program to demo what you need to do for the challenge. So I'm going to get the robot to drive backwards and then maybe take a left. And let's see if the robot is no longer stuck. Let's make sure that we are changing our variable if it's making another turn. And let's also update our print statement. So we're going to say the robot has detected. And rather than saying number of times here, let's keep set cursor to next row. Delete this. And we are going to say the robot has detected. And I think we can put this into our print statement here. The robot has detected green. Let's see if this works. Now, this is going to be where I stop. If this works, this is, where I'll be, this is where I'll be stopping and I'll be letting you complete the rest of the challenge by yourself. So if it detects green, does it reverse? Let's look at the flashing light to see if it goes over this block and that will indicate which of the conditions is being carried out. And here we go. The robot has reversed. Now, your job is to finish writing this program. So if you want to add another condition, press on the plus. And what you're going to need to also do is get the robot to print out the different colors that it is detecting here, and also the number of times that it is turning. And you can see print statement for color detection isn't fully working so I will let you explore how to get this so it prints green and we could just write in green for now because we know that but it's better for us to use a sensor and this is the challenge for this week and this is the complete challenge for challenge number three so looking forward to seeing your solutions and if you're not one of my students and you are watching this video and you want access to this challenge document or if you're another teacher, do drop me a message underneath the video.